Hey guys, so Money in the Bank 2017 went down tonight, and in this video, we're going to break it down match by match, so let's get started. On the kickoff show, the, re the recently reunited Hype Brothers, uh, Zack Ryder and Mojo Raleigh took on the Colognes. Uh, pretty fairly, dis uh, pretty entertaining match for the most part. Uh, the Hype Brothers got the win. Uh, you know, it's just a kickoff match, as I say, as every video, just gets the crowd warmed up for the main uh, the main card and did a good job with that. Uh, the Hype Brothers defeating the Colognes. I don't see this as a rivalry lasting very long. Um, the Colognes have just kind of become uh, enhancement talent at this point, and it should be nice to see the Hype Brothers hopefully get inserted back into the title picture sometime down the road. They won the number one contender tag team opportunity before Zack Ryder got hurt, so they never really got their shot at the tag team title, so hopefully they can get that shot and prove to everybody that they are a legit tag team in the SmackDown tag team division. Uh, the following match after that on the Money in the Bank card was the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, uh, first of its kind. Uh, it was, I believe, Carmella, Natalia, Becky Lynch, Tamina, and Charlotte all battling it out for the Money in the Bank contract for the right to face the women's champion whenever they want. And a pretty good match, a uh, pretty uh, high risk, a lot of high risk, well, not a lot, a uh, pretty decent amount of high risk spots. Uh, the women definitely made the most of their opportunity. Um, pretty much everybody got time to shine. But the ending is something that a lot of people were kind of split about. Uh, a lot of people thought, you know, Ellsworth getting involved, good stuff for something. Uh, potentially down the line. Um, I think it may evolve into Ellsworth becoming kind of like Andy Kaufman, but a lot of people did not like that James Ellsworth got involved and ultimately uh, gave the match away to Carmella. So what happened was Becky Lynch was climbing the ladder, Ellsworth comes in, tips the ladder, similar to what happened to Dean Ambrose at TLC uh, this past, I think, December. But he ends up climbing the ladder, grabs the brief briefcase, pulls it off the little hook, and then drops it to Carmella. So Ellsworth technically won the match, even though he wasn't really in it, but he did pull the briefcase off the hook, had it in his possession before dropping it to Carmella. So they said it's going to be addressed on SmackDown what's going to happen with that. I could definitely see them making Ellsworth, though, the winner, and he becomes like a Andy Kaufman type of character. That, or they're going to have Carmella put it back up for grabs, and I still think Carmella's going to successfully retain the Money in the brief Bank briefcase if she has to put it up for grabs. But very interesting result. As I said, a lot of people were split. They either liked it or they didn't like it. Uh, personally, I did not like it. But if, if Ellsworth becomes kind of like Andy Kaufman, it could wind up being a very entertaining outcome from that match. Uh, after that, it was the New Day taking on the Usos for the tag team titles. This was a really good match. A fun match. Um, a lot of near falls, crowds on the edge of their seat, I was on the edge of my seat wanting to know who was going to win this bout. But in the end, the Usos uh, lost via countout, which is really lame, really put a sour taste in your mouth after seeing New Day and the Usos both deliver in the ring. And as a result, with New Day retaining the titles, or excuse me, with the Usos retaining the titles via countout and the New Day getting the win, pretty much guaranteed that a rematch is going to happen here. So I, I do not think this rivalry is over. I definitely see New Day and the Usos continuing to butt heads for the Tag Team Championships. Um, after that, it was the women's title match, Naomi taking on Lana. And this was by far the worst match on the card. Not a very good match at all. Lana did not look good in the ring. Um, this is a lot of awkward moments in there, I guess, because I think this is Lana's second full match on the main roster. The first match was at WrestleMania 32, and she was barely in there, and she really did not have a lot of experience, and it looked like she did not have a place in the ring. Uh, it looked like she had no business being there. Naomi gets the win, but the big story here is that Carmella's music hit. She They made, made her walk down the ring with Ellsworth and the referee, and it looked like she was about to hand in the briefcase, but she stopped at the last minute, just watched the match unfold. Uh, Naomi ends up picking up the win, and then Carmella walks back up the ring. So she didn't cash in her briefcase yet. I thought she might have to avoid the whole Tuesday night Daniel Bryan, uh, Shane McMahon uh, discussion about the briefcase, but she did not cash in. She still has the briefcase in her possession for now, at least, and Naomi retains the title. But they definitely plan the seeds for Naomi versus Carmella, with Carmella uh, threatening to cash in that briefcase. Now the following match, or no, excuse me, not match, the next big moment of the night, the Miracle Mike Bennett and Maria appeared on Money in the Bank. 
they are officially part of the SmackDown Live roster. I was excited to see them. I was not too excited at the gimmick they were given. Um, Maria, you know, she was she kind of evolved into like the first woman of Ring of Honor and kind of carried that over to TNA. And she looks like she's carrying it over to WWE. She referred to herself as the first lady of wrestling, I believe, or something similar to that. And Mike Bennett, who is now known as Mike Canella, is Maria's last name. And the gimmick is just like a lovey dovey couple, which. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, personally, their first impression, I thought this is gonna suck, but I don't know. I mean, if anybody can make it work, I'm sure Mike Bennett, Maria can. So hopefully they can make it work because I like Mike Bennett's work, especially in Ring of Honor. I liked him a lot in Ring of Honor and what he was doing there. So hopefully that translates into WWE success and he can be around on SmackDown for a long time. Uh, the next match though was Ginger Mahal taking on Randy Orton, defending his WWE title against the Viper in St. Louis, Missouri, Randy Orton's hometown. And before the match, they showed Sergeant Slaughter, um, Larry the Axe Henning, uh, Ric Flair was there, Cowboy Bob Orton, a bunch of old, like, I think it was NWA or AWA legends who were in the house. And of course, with the legends being there, they got involved in the match later. Um, it was a fairly fun match. Uh, started out slow, but began to pick up pace a lot toward the end. And in the uh, toward the end, the Bollywood Boys or the Singh Brothers, um, they were ejected from ringside after Orton hit an RKO on Mahal, and they put Mahal's ro foot on the rope. So the referee ejects him, but instead they threaten Cowboy Bob, Randy's dad. Randy Orton goes over there and just destroys him. Um, he hits an RKO on one brother on the floor, then he hits like a running RKO on the announce tables to the other brother through the announce table, which is a really cool spot. Gets back in the ring though, Mahal is uh, able to hit his finisher and successfully retains the WWE Championship. Fun match toward the end, as I said, started out slow but picked up nicely. And I, I, I don't think this rivalry is over. I mean, Mahal getting another win over Randy Orton is huge for his career. Uh, further helps solidify since his championship reign. But until he gets that win without like another interference from the Singh brothers, because it was like a blatant copy of what happened at Backlash with the uh, Randy Orton taking out both brothers and Mahal kind of sneaks the win in the win. Um, this finish was very similar to that, so until I see something different, I'm still not sold on Mahal 100%, but, you know, maybe if he gets that win, that third and final win over Randy Orton without the help of the Singh brothers, I'll probably be sold on him. Um, after that, it was Breeze Hango versus The Ascension. Uh, they had a Miami Vice spoof earlier in the night with Breeze Hango receiving a VHS tape um, of that was sent to them by The Ascension. So they had a match because it was real that the Ascension were the guys who ended up wrecking their office. And in the end, Brizango got the win. Uh, no big surprise there. Brizango has gotten themselves over with their Fashion Cops gimmick. It's very entertaining. Their backstage uh, segments are very entertaining. And it's just sad to see how far the Ascension have fallen. They were, I think they're the longest reigning NXT Tag Team Champions. And now they're just enhancement talent on the main roster. So uh, while it's good to see Brizango get some love from their creative and writing teams, um, Ascension is still does not matter to them, and it was a very evident tonight. After that, it was the Money in the Bank ladder match: Baron Corbin versus AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens versus uh, who am I missing? Nakamura, and I think there was one more guy: Dolph Ziggler. Uh, those six guys battling it out for the Money in the Bank briefcase. Fun match, best match of the night. Um, without question, without the talent you have in the ring, can't go wrong there. Um, before the match, though, when Nakamura was making his entrance, Baron Corbin attacked him. Uh, seemingly took them took him out of the match as Nakamura was escorted backstage. The match began with five guys, so I thought Rusev might appear and take Nakamura's spot. Did not happen, but Nakamura did make his grand return to the ring and entered himself into the match, and it actually looked like he was going to pull off the win. Uh, there were a lot of cool moments here. You had AJ Styles versus Nakamura. You had Sami Zayn. Zayn was on fire for like 10 solid minutes in this match, taking out everybody. He had a massive sun flip, sunset flip powerbomb at the top of the ladder. Um, AJ Styles was dangling from the hook after I think Dolph Ziggler took the ladder out from under him, and then he just face planted from the hook to the ring. It looked painful. Um, he also ended up giving the FU to Kevin Owens onto a ladder. Owens took a beating in this match. Zayn hit the uh, 
it was like a, a, a um, reverse explorer suplex or whatever um, on Owens onto the LED ring apron, which looked really painful. Uh, There's a lot of cool spots in this match. Definitely match of the night. And in the end, though, Baron Corbin gets the win. Um, I'd pick Kevin Owens if it wasn't if Rusev didn't make his return. So I was kind of pulling for Owens, but. Baron Corbin gets the win. Again, I'm not sold on Baron Corbin. I just find that guy not that interesting. He's just kind of blah to me, but uh, hopefully this Money in the Bank run he has changes my mind. But as of now, I just I was just, just one thrilled with Corbin getting the win. I mean, it makes sense. He's the young guy. I, mean, I would have liked to see possibly Zayn get the win, but WWE has been presenting him as a nerd ever since he came over from Raw. So I didn't really think he had a shot, but... You know, maybe WWE can sell me on Corbin with his Money in the Bank run, and it could be very entertaining once he becomes the WWE Champion. They hinted at a feud between him and Mahal on Talking Smack. Um, Mahal was talking, and then Corbin just kind of slammed the briefcase on the desk and had to stare down before Mahal left. So uh, there's definitely a, a ton of different avenues they can go with Baron Corbin having the Money in the Bank briefcase. And it should be a surprise whenever he decides to cash it in, which is always the best part of the Money in the Bank results is the cash in. So those are my thoughts on Money in the Bank 2017. Uh, overall, not as good as last year's. Last year's was, of course, with Dean Ambrose winning the WWE title. But overall, I thought that was the best Money in the Bank pay-per-view WWE has ever produced. And this one uh, didn't come close to beating it, but still fairly entertaining uh, in the end. And that's all I got for you. So if you liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below. I have videos about sports, wrestling, memorabilia, and a whole lot more. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Uh, give me a follow on Twitter at CincyFanZone. I live tweet during wrestling events like Money in the Bank. I also live tweet during sporting events. And it's the easiest and fastest way to get updates on my website, CincyFanZone.blogspot.com. There's a link to that website in the description below as well. All right, weekly blog post for it. Every video on my YouTube channel is over there. And I also have a bunch of pictures of bobbleheads in my collection, autographs, and a whole lot more. So please feel free to check that out. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.